Hey there, this right here in front of me is the HP Elite Desk Mini 705G4. You might recognize this as we've taken a look at this system before on this channel, but I want to do a revisit of this system in 2024. Since the chip in here, the Ryzen 5 2400G, is pretty much the first generation of Ryzen APUs, so I want to see how this holds up in 2024. This is the first iteration that we got to see of Vega on an APU finally moving away from all of the old AMD designs that were really holding the company back. We are now on Ryzen, we are now on Vega, and this brought with it some massive performance increases in both CPU performance from AMD at the time, but also in the GPU side of things. The 2400G at the time being the best APU you could buy. Coming in with 12 Vega cores, though don't be misled there. There's a reason why we saw core counts for the iGPUs reduce as the generations went on because 12 cores was honestly too many for such limited bandwidth in terms of memory to feed. One thing to keep in mind is that this mini PC here is extremely limited and extremely cut down. HP made it an extremely compact system here and as such had to limit the TDP. And one of the biggest issues of this system in general is that since we're using sodium memory, we're very, very limited in terms of memory speed. So that's going to greatly affect the bandwidth that we have to the iGPU. We'll see how this system does in its current configuration, but I am honestly very tempted to just rip this thing open and take out the processor but actually let's take a look at what is inside the system so getting in here you could see that we have an extremely small setup all around you can see the main fan that is going to be cooling pretty much everything in here of the main heat sink you could see where most of the exhaust is going to be coming out from and of course you might be curious about this hyundai branded ssd it's a, just a generic ssd that i managed to find on sale a couple of years ago i can't for the life of me remember what oem decided to license hyundai's brand to make ssds but uh, that is something that happened and well, it's a QLC SSD, but it's held up for a couple of years now. I've had it even before I had this specific system. This is already like its second home. But if we just lift up the fan right here, we could actually see the RAM. And as I said, it is so dim memory, which means speeds are going to be abysmal, especially since the first generation of Ryzen had a tough time hitting higher memory clock speeds. So I'm curious if we slapped this into a motherboard today, what kind of speeds we could actually get. So we'll see what the performance is like as is right here, but we might actually take this apart and see what we can do with it. So I admit trying to run Ghost of Tsushima on this system might have been an unkind move considering how old it is in comparison to this title. But in all honesty, I'm actually really impressed by how this is running with the lowest in-game graphics settings. And we are using FSR, and it is FSR at the performance preset. And it's not incredible by any means, but also it's not awful. And what I found in my testing more than anything with this chip is that FSR is really just been an absolute godsend to this type of really low-end hardware because it can actually give you surprising levels of playability in modern titles in a way that you kind of just don't really expect i think a perfect example of the contrast here is if we take a look at batman arkham knight a game that came out much closer towards the release of this apu and running at the full 1080p resolution with the lowest in-game graphics settings ends up netting us some pretty bad levels of performance this has to do with being at the full 1080p resolution. It's just too much for this system. Even back when it first released, a lot of titles were really going to struggle at 1080p. You were better off going with something like 900p or 720p. But as you saw with Ghost of Tsushima, with FSR, we're actually able to get some pretty decent levels of performance out of titles at that full 1080p resolution, which of course that's not what it's actually hitting. It's rendering at a much lower resolution than that. But it overall did look pretty good as opposed to here in Batman where everything looks nice and sharp, but uh, that FPS is a disaster. And another game that really proves my point is Tiny Tina's Wonderland here running with the lowest in-game graphics settings and we are using FSR at the performance preset and this lets us get a really 
really nice level of performance out of this. Considering that this title came out four years after the release of this APU, I'm surprised it's performing this well on there. And I think that should also contextualize how impressive the performance in Ghost of Tsushima was, to where an APU that came out in 2018 was actually doing surprisingly well, again, being carried by FSR there. But that doesn't really matter because it has FSR. You could just turn that on and suddenly the game is playable. Sure, it's not going to look amazing, but neither is playing the game at 5 FPS. You're going to have to drop the resolution anyway. Might as well use an upscaling system that actually tries its best to not affect the quality as much. Of course, an APU like this is still decently powerful considering the fact that it is 12 Vega cores. It doesn't hit as high a clock speeds as we've seen Vega on more modern mini PCs, but it's usually the TDP limit that is the problem there. As you can see here, we're not really going much past 25, so that's kind of our hard limit, and that's becoming a real issue with our GPU clocks, which out of the box are not that high. And you gotta remember that first gen Ryzen wasn't exactly spectacular in terms of performance. It was a huge leap for AMD, but even that 50% IPC uplift essentially brought them up to as well levels when Skylake was already out. You just were able to get more cores per dollar on AMD, but on an individual core basis, you were already looking at performance that was practically a a good three years behind and of course since that is ryzen 1000 you think that wouldn't affect this ryzen 2000 series but that is actually not the case since first gen apus were actually based off of the original zen architecture even though they had the 2000 series moniker so this is zen 1 this is not zen plus so the cpu performance isn't great it's definitely starting to cook in a little system like this and we're not able to get its full potential so okay after seeing those gaming results it seems pretty clear that there is actually quite a lot of potential here and when you really think about it it makes a lot of sense the ryzen 5 2400g was the top of the line apu at the time and the thing is is amd kind of did not leave vega for quite some time to the point where you could buy brand new systems today that are still coming with vega graphics this is 12 cores of that now it's very memory limited in the situation that it's in right now Plus, it's very TDP limited, but you take this CPU, you plop it into, say, a B450 or a B550 motherboard, and suddenly you're able to play around with the TDP, you're able to play around with clock speeds, and you're able to play around with memory speeds. So I was kind of expecting to just take a look at a few games running on here, kind of just laugh at the performance, but instead I kind of came out of it a little bit interested to the point where i already did go on ebay and buy an am4 motherboard it's a b450 should be here in a few days and i'm just gonna rip out the cpu of this and i'm gonna plop it in that because i want to see actually how good the 2400g is at playing ghost of tsushima if we let it fully flex its power we're really showing it in a extremely cut down version in this system and for what it is this was pretty impressive levels of performance considering the price point that this system comes in but i can't help but imagine what the 2400g could actually do with a bit more juice and it's funny because if anything this testing has shown me that if you bought the 2400g over the 2200g it has aged so so much better because while the gpu is not bad at all on the 2200g the fact that it's only four cores without any hyper threading has really made it age so quickly in comparison to the 2400g and it's funny that we're seeing a repeat situation of if you're one of those people that bought the i5s back when they were quad cores without hyper threading versus an i7 that was just a quad core with hyper threading well that i7 did end up aging noticeably more gracefully than just a pure quad core that's the exact same thing that happened here and it seems like the people that bought the 2400g and made their own itx systems with them probably got a great 
deal considering just how well these have aged but we'll see actually the full raw numbers when that am4 motherboard gets here and we're actually able to plop this thing out of there as for the deal that you can get here with this specific hp elite desk mini at 120 to 130 dollars it's not a bad option at all considering the fact that everything around it in that price range is abysmal in terms of performance though it should be noted that the single core performance difference between this and alder lake n based processors is really not going to be the, all that different but you do get hyper threading here and you get a significantly better igpu but also at the cost of just a much hotter much larger system so it's not exactly a complete win for the hp in fact the hp has quite enough drawbacks that i would think that most people would more than likely be happier with an n100 or N97 than they would be with this if all they wanted was a casual use computer just because this can be pretty loud and get pretty hot while doing practically nothing but of course if you are interested in the system you can take a look at it down below just keep in mind it's a little bit of a luck of the draw on what the actual configuration is going to be in terms of the specific CPU and the specific RAM but let me know what you think down below I'll catch you guys in the next one